We're going to install Python 3.1 using Linux and so I am currently uh, in a, a Linux environment. Uh, this happens to be Ubuntu but it could be any of the Linux distributions. And the first thing we're going to have to do is go out to the Python website and download Python so that we can uh, extract it and then install it. So I'm going to go to Firefox and go to the Python homepage, which is www.python.org. And we would like to install Python 3.1. You can see we have 2.6 and we also have 3.1. And I'll go to 3.1. And if I scroll down here, I can find lots of different download possibilities. And the one that we're going to choose in this case is a gzipped source tarball. And what that really means is that all of the source files for Python, all the files that we need to install Python, have been, in a sense, archived and then zipped to make them smaller so that we can easily download the whole package. Later on, we'll have to uh, take those pieces back apart again. I'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to click on this and get the download started. And you can see that in my case with Firefox, it asks me, what do I want to do? And by default, it says, do I want to save the file? Well, I've got Firefox set up so that it automatically will save to a directory. I set the preferences in Firefox. You may choose uh, a different directory, but I'm going to pick OK. And so you can see now that the uh, download process uh, took place and that file now has been downloaded to my machine and now we have to go find it. So I'm going to close the download window and I'm actually going to close out of Firefox. Now what I need to do most of my work is a terminal window. So I'm going to go to Applications, Accessories, Terminal and this brings up what's called a Linux or Unix shell. And we're not going to do a lot of shell processing, but I'm going to show you the commands that you need to actually install uh, the Python environment. So the first thing we have to do is navigate to the directory where the uh, Python archive file was downloaded. And in my case, it's called download stuff. And so I'm going to change directory into download stuff. In your case, this might be different you simply have to change directory into whatever directory you've chosen for Firefox to install or to well uh, download that file. And when I list the contents, you can see there it is, python-3.1.tgz. Now, this is what's called a tar file. Tar files are, in the old days, what was called the tape archive. And it's also uh, zipped up. And so the first thing we have to do is use the tar facility and we have to give it flags to extract all of the contents of this what's called tar ball. And this is a zipped up tar ball. And the file is called python-3.1tgz. And when we do that, in a very short amount of time, if we do a listing now, what we're going to see is that there are now uh, two entries. One is the original archive, and the other is this directory called Python-3.1. If we change directory into Python-3.1, and then look at the contents, what we find are all the familiar pieces that we need when we build software in Linux. In particular, there is a configuration file and there are some other scripts that will be used for what's called making the application. So, now it's time to start installing the software. First thing we have to do when we install software under Linux is run the configuration script. And you typically want to do all of these things as the super user or as the system administrator. And depending upon how your system is set up, you may or may not have access to that. On my machine, 
because I installed Linux myself and because I set it up this way, my user, uh, which in this case is, is just called David, has access to do super user privilege commands if I do what's called a sudo. So I can say sudo and then I can run the configure script. Dot means in the current directory, slash configure means run the configure script that exists. And I'm going to do this as the super user. It's going to ask me for the password. And if I type that in correctly, now it goes about doing its work. So we've now completed that aspect. The next thing we have to do is what's referred to as a make. And so I'm simply going to say sudo make. Make is the term that's used in Linux for compiling all of the pieces, uh, all of the source files, and creating the actual executable that's going to become the Python environment. So sudo make, and you can see that we're getting a lot of commands, and they're all starting with what's called GCC, and that means that the C compiler is being invoked to translate source code, which is actually written in C, into uh, executable code and like I said that final execution will be the Python environment so this will take a while there are a lot of parts Python is a, is a fairly large application that has lots of pieces and we now have one final step and that is to actually do the install which will install Python as part of the directory structure or the file structure within Linux and the way that we do that is we say once again sudo for perform this command as super user and the command is make and then we tell it to actually do the install so we did a configure we did a make and now we do a make install and now we're actually installing files into our file system we're copying in a sense all the files that need to be placed um, into certain directories so that they're going to be accessible to all the users on this system. If you look closely at what's scrolling by, you'll notice that there are things about compiling, but you'll also notice that it's compiling .py files. So instead of compiling C files, and now in this case we're compiling uh, Python files. So the install process has finished, and it looks like everything went the way it was supposed to. So the next thing we can do is um, maybe go back up to the directory where we came from and maybe go back once again up to our desktop and so we're sitting back where we were when we created this terminal in the first place and maybe what we better do is is try and test to see whether this is going to work. And so in order to run this um, from the terminal window, uh, remember there are two ways I can I get access to Python. I can do it either as the Python shell or I can get access through idle. So in this case, because there are a number of different versions of Python, I want to run Python 3.1. The command is to actually type in Python 3.1. And if I do that, notice that what I get is the interactive Python shell, it says Python 3.1, final release candidate, and everything is as I would expect, 2 plus 3 evaluates to 5. Now when I want to exit the Python shell from this terminal window, uh, I can just do a control D, and control D will get me back to the, to the uh, shell prompt again. Now if I want to run idle, I type idle 3 because this is the idle that's part of Python 